is up you guys hello lifters and listeners listen i am on a i am on a holy ghost high (laughs) today because 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 i have hit 100 subscribers as of today praise be the lord and uh pew, 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 pew. we need to have sound effects it i'm sure it's coming down the line but man i i just had to say that it's been bubbling it's been bubbling up in, in my chest all day and in my spirit all day and i'm finally in front of the camera and i can say it um so i'm just so excited y'all i had to had to get that out welcome back to the lifter up podcast i'm your host latrice and if you are new here, then welcome. If you are one of the 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 few that have just joined to, to push us to this 100 subscriber threshold, then welcome. And if you have been a part of our Lift Her Up community, our Lift Her Up society here for a while, then just welcome back. Just welcome back, y'all. I um it's it's been a day, but it's, it's been a very good day, not not a bad one. The Lord has, has shown out, and I am very glad for that. So today, um, I hit 100 subscribers, and I made a little post about it, just thanking my community and everything, because I am very appreciative. But it did give me thinking about the fact that I did not choose this life for myself, okay? (laughs) Actually, quite the opposite. I ran from this for a while. I tried to fight this for a long time. Being in front of this camera, speaking to people, really running away from my call. And there there were certain people in my community that helped to push me out of my comfort zone. And now we're here. And this journey is nowhere near finished yet. But there are times that I have become discouraged because honestly, because of the numbers, because of the numbers. And just like I put in my post, numbers aren't everything. They're really not. Metrics are not everything. However, when you know that God has called you to something and he has made promises for you and you are not yet seeing the fulfillment of those promises, but you keep trucking and you keep working and you keep putting forth the effort and the prayer and honestly, the tears and the crawling as well. It's just like, Lord, when, (laughs) like when, 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 when. And 100 subscribers, I have been wanting that for a long time now, a very long time. And I feel very blessed that the Lord has finally brought me to that point. But I did not choose this for myself. I I did not. And a lot of us are in that place where we have not chosen to be in the situation that we are in. We have not chosen the, the call of our lives yet. Nonetheless, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. So I wanted to talk about that today, about being chosen and what that really means to God and what it means for our lives and why it is so difficult sometimes to walk in a chosen path that God has for you. So let's get on into it. What does it mean to be chosen by God? Simply put, it means to be set apart. For God's intended purposes, it means that you are going to fulfill his will, that he has chosen you specifically to um, manifest and to materialize his will here on the earth as it is in heaven. Prime example of this is the Israelites. They were God's chosen people. Abraham was chosen. His lineage was chosen. David's lineage, Jesus, of course, chosen our Messiah, the apostles, and so many other people in the Bible that were chosen. But they were specifically chosen to fulfill a purpose that God had, a need that he had um, to, again, materialize in the earth. And to be chosen is when God calls you to do a job and you show up for that job accordingly. 
So that means whatever it is, you show up to do it and you you work it. You conquer that thing until you get your next <laughs> assignment, so on and so forth. So notice I was saying that I did not choose this for myself and that none of those people outside of Jesus, because he willingly decided to leave heaven to come down here, but um, none of them chose but Jesus still had to submit to the father. So that is also different, but none of them chose themselves. If if that makes sense, God had to choose them. We don't get to dictate who God chooses. And that's probably for the best because a lot of us would, based on our eyes and our perspective, our, our flesh and our carnality, we would choose based on the wrong things, based off of looks and appearance and money and status and and wealth um, and, and all those different things. But we have to remember that God does not um, disqualify us based on those things and he does not look at us in regards to the, the physicality. And I was actually reading this in first Samuel recently. So first Samuel 16 verse six through seven, when they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and said, certainly the Lord's anointed one is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or his stature because I have rejected him. Humans do not see what the Lord sees for humans see what is visible, but the Lord sees the heart. This is when Samuel goes to Jesse's house looking to anoint the next king after Saul. So we know that that king is David. David was the youngest out of all of his brothers. David's father lined up all of his siblings, all of his brothers, line by line, and Samuel approaches them and he sees how the the stature and how handsome his oldest brother is. And he's like, oh yeah, surely (laughs) the Lord's anointed one is here. But God is saying, "Mm -mm -mm, not too much, (laughs) not too much, because what you see here is not all there is. I'm looking at the heart of the person. And that's exactly what he did. He chose David, a man after his own heart. So again, being chosen is not about your age. It's not about your looks. It's not about your gender, any type of prestige you have, your education, your class, your social status. Um, It's it's not about anything. God chooses based on our hearts. And even though, actually, even when, before we meet David, so going back to King Saul, when Samuel first anointed Saul to be king, even Saul was looking at himself from the outside, like, how could you be speaking to me in such a way? He questioned Samuel because he was from the smallest clan, from the smallest tribe of Israel. He was a Benjaminite. So he's looking at Samuel like, how could I be? How could you possibly be saying these things to me? And then Samuel continues to show him like, you are going to get the largest portion here because this is what the Lord has anointed and appointed you to be. So even with that, again, it's not about where we come from geographically. It's not about um, our background, our history, or anything like that. Again, God chooses based on the heart and based on the things that he needs accomplished in the earth. So why does God choose certain people? I've made a list of four different things that came to mind, and we're going to tie those back to scripture too. First thing for leadership. So God giving divine guidance to his people. His people need divine direction to go to a certain place or to do a certain thing. Thinking of the book of Judges, all the judges that were judging the Israelites. Gideon, the the prophetess Deborah, David, prime examples of leaders, great leaders, military, government, um, teaching up the, the people to go in the ways of God and not to depart from them. Second, restructuring and correction. So judges could fall under this as well. But I also thought about the apostle Paul, who he was chosen and he went from persecuting Christians to discipling Christians. 
which I just I thought was amazing. And Paul wrote so much of the New Testament correcting these Christians that he has discipled. Right. And I just thought that was amazing. Third, dismantling of faulty and evil systems. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus literally did 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 all of that. He came to fulfill the law and to end the abuse and misuse of the law because he knew God knew that humans could not keep the law. So he came to fulfill it for us, giving us a new system to operate under called grace, the New Testament. Amen. And lastly, God chooses certain people for rescue missions. Prime example, Moses leading the Israelites out of Egyptian captivity, out of bondage into the wilderness, into the promised land, even though he didn't make it himself. Uh, Obviously chosen people, we have our flaws too. (laughs) Amen. But Moses is a prime example of a rescue mission that God can use chosen people for. Also, the book of Esther, Esther, her story, I was just reminded of her story last night, but she used her God given favor with the king to protect her people who were God's chosen people. So, again, those four were for leadership, restructuring, correction, dismantling of faulty and evil systems and for rescue missions. So sometimes you have to look back at those things and say, what is the issue that I have been created to resolve? What is the gifting that God has given me to resolve for people? And it could fall under those categories. Those are just some ones that the Lord had given me and some examples. But when you're chosen, a lot of the times we start to question ourselves and why we're doing the things we're doing and if we're really called to be doing the things that we're doing. But when you get a good knowing and a good understanding of why of how God made you, then, then that why, then that why normally comes shortly after that. Why is it so difficult to be a chosen person for the Lord? And this can be difficult. Like I said before, chosen people, we have our flaws as we all do, as we all do, but mainly it's because it's the more difficult road. We are required to go a different way than the average person, than the easy route. That's why scripture says many are called, but few are chosen because many people who get the call, they don't answer it because they they see that it is the the less likely road. It is the, the lowly road, the narrow way, <laughs> the narrow road. And there are times when you are walking that path and you will be rejected or looked at like you're crazy by people just for following the Lord and following his instructions. And because you are there to shake stuff up. Right. Because if we're talking about if we're talking about a leader trying to break down or tear apart strongholds and generational faultiness and mindsets and systems, that's going to shake stuff up. So people that are accustomed to living in a certain way and doing things a certain way, they are not going to want to let go of of the ways that have been, well, that that they think have been servicing them. They're going to fight against the grain. They're going to think that we're doing too much or that we need to get along with their program so that they can go about and continue to live in deceit and in blindness, honestly. So it, that can be a difficult path to take because it is, it's a different road than everyone else. But what people don't understand now who are rejecting, rejecting us and who are um, calling us crazy or whatever. What they don't see now, they will definitely see the fruit of it later. Okay. Amen. So I hope that encourages you. It's also difficult because we're called, our development looks different. We're called to a different type of development. And that's because God needs to prove our trustworthiness to him and sometimes ourselves and not just in action, but also in character. So you can't just have faith and expect God to, to show up if you are not ready 
to receive that thing. If your character cannot carry the load of what you are faithing for, you have to be able to have the character to complete and hold the mission that you have been given. And sometimes that difficulty comes from God because again, he's trying to prove to us that we are worthy of the call that we have been given. Again, I ran away from this for a long time because I didn't think that it, that it was mine, but it, 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 we struggle in that area and God has to, has to wring out different parts of our personality and our character to show that we actually are capable of doing the thing that he has called us to do and that he expects us to do it as well. So simply put, to be chosen is to know that your life and your purpose is bigger than you and that it greatly impacts the lives of those that you have been called to serve or to help or to lead. It's knowing that our lives are not our lives are not apart from each other. We live in a world where everything is so isolated naturally, but spiritually we are way more connected than what we realize. Our lives are literally linked to each other. And that's why that's why chosen people exist because the Lord knows that certain people are called to certain voices. And certain voices are called to certain testimonies and certain testimonies are called to certain people and and powers and then authorities and, and mountains. It has the power to 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 it has the power to bring down principalities and to to re-engage people in a way that reignites their fire for God or births a new fire for God or births new ideas. I was thinking about this earlier and I don't know why this is coming to my mind now, but the reason that we have to, we have to walk according to what the Lord tells us to do, regardless of how scared we may feel being a chosen person is because it's needed. Kingdom work is needed. The enemy tries so hard to replicate what God does that he has all of these He has all of these occupations and people who are serving him on these different mountains in our world. And he thinks that they belong to him. He's trying for for them to belong to him so that he can bring more people into the kingdom of darkness. So our job is to go out and take back what belongs to the Lord kingdom work. So. If you are someone that is called to be a, maybe like a esthetician, I I heard about this today. There are many esthetician services, classes, courses, and in their courses, their instructors are teaching new age, new age practices as they are doing these, these exercises. And that's dangerous. (laughs) A lot of us may not know it, but it's dangerous. So we as believers, if you know that you have been called to into the beauty market, which is a huge market, you need to go go out and make sure that you are building a beauty brand that is going to exalt the name of God because the enemy is not playing. So what happens when you have a bunch of evilness running amok in the beauty industry? That's doing things tampering with our body. That's doing things to tamper with our mind in the way that we perceive ourselves. That's why, that's why a lot of the things are running amok the way we see them because it's affecting how we see ourselves, our self esteem, our confidence, all of those things is brainwashing us. So not a tangent, y'all. <laughs> not trying to go off on a tangent, but do the thing that God has called you to do, whatever that is within your your realm of of influence. If you're chosen for that thing, go ahead and conquer it because the Lord needs you to go to that mountain, to go to the occupation, to go to that calling specific that you're doing, that business, whatever, and and bring it back for for the kingdom. To bring it back for the kingdom of God. And I know that doesn't sound easy and it can sound intimidating and hard. It is. Sometimes it really is, but don't let that discourage you. Please do not let that discourage you because there are more with us than there are with them. When we say yes to God, we have the whole 
whole heaven's armies backing us. All of it is, is backing us. We have the word of God that is backing us. And when the Lord has chosen you, that just means that he thinks very highly of you. He thinks very highly of you and he wants you to be part of his plan. And that's a beautiful thing. That is a beautiful thing. And that's the encouragement there. So again, not perfect to be called is not perfect to be chosen, but it is, it's a rewarding life. And beyond this physical life, it's even more rewarding in the afterlife because we just want to make the Lord proud. So I pray that that encourages you today to keep going. Please keep going, even though it is hard and it is difficult. And that is going to wrap up our episode. And I again, 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 y'all, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to 100 subscribers. It's kind of surreal. And I'm just basking it in. Um, I love you guys dearly. Thank you so much for your continued support. Please continue. We ain't stopping, all right? <laughs> like, this ain't stopping. <laughs> Please continue to like, share, and subscribe. So much more is on the way. So much more is on the way. And if anything, this is just confirming to me that God still wants me to go forward. And that is very encouraging. <laughs> so I'll be praying for y'all. Y'all pray for me. And yeah, let's, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Leave a comment or something to, to congratulate your girl. And let's chop it up. Let's talk. Love y'all again. And until next time, remember to stay encouraged. Bye.